to ultimately be a review of the 50 inch 4k onn roku smart tv so uh, usually these things are really easy to set up so you basically just throw the feet on them and you connect them to a wi-fi network and they pretty much set themselves up as you can see we're here at walmart on location but uh basically this is just for uh, my uh, cousin as you can see it has a 60 refresh rate and three HDMI inputs. This is a $218 television and uh, it's one of the things that you're more likely to end up buying especially if you have a kid and you're setting up a room for a child and they need a television or if you're setting up a guest room. So as usual they come with the typical Roku remote and uh, we're gonna set this bad boy up should only take a couple of minutes and I'm gonna make my little technology review on it. Now it's granted that this is, um, I have the receipt. So if you wanna add the warranty again, you can add it, but they basically gave you all the money back from the last one. So if you wanna add the warranty, you can add it. It's just that it's more money. It's like 30 more dollars or something. Okay, so chances are, if you're watching this review, you're wondering whether or not you should buy the TCL 50 inch television, the ONN 50 inch television, or the Hisense 50 inch television. Now, first of all, let me just say that one thing I've noticed the more and more of these televisions that I've bought in order to replace older televisions, in this case, this television is replacing a much older projection television. Um, these things are being produced as cheaply as possible. This television costs $218. It's almost unheard of to get a television for $218. It's a 50 inch. It comes with three HDMI ports. It comes with one composite ethernet. And then naturally you get a coax line for the side, a single headphone jack, which can also be plugged directly to a sound bar or a speaker. It also comes with an optical audio out SPDIF. And it comes with a USB port for you to plug in a USB flash drive and watch pictures or video and whatnot, which I've actually used, and it works just fine. Um, I put the entire series of Picard from CBS on a flash drive for my uncle, and he was able to watch it all using the USB port on the television. So anyway, this is the outgoing television. As you can see, it's a big, old, dusty projection LCD television. The thing about it, what, what you have to understand is most people, when they shop, they're not buying the highest in tech for a television they can buy. What they're really shopping on is value and price. Size versus price. This television is for children, mostly, so that they can watch their little shows like uh, Dr. Stuffins and uh, whatever, what, you know, Teen Titans or whatever else it is that like toddlers watch. I don't know. But as soon as you take it out of the box, you plug it in. It wants to connect to your wireless network. It supports the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz wireless spectrums. It takes almost no effort to get this thing hooked up. I've noticed that the TCL Hisense and this model on because on is a relatively new player on the television market but i've noticed that setting up this television felt almost exactly like setting up the hisense model and the last tcl model i got and i realized the reason why it also felt like setting up my mom's brand new 55 inch sanyo that i got her it's because roku allows them to go cheaply on televisions for example the remote that comes with this television is a standard Roku remote. Now, in and of itself, I'm not, I don't have a problem with it so much because it is a remote control and it does allow you quick access to the um, Roku graphic user interface. My problem is that when you put a Roku smart television in it, you've basically made it cheap because now the television doesn't have its own remote control it doesn't really have its own graphic user interface it only has what roku puts in it now that has some advantages if you have to download new firmware new software updates that's roku it's coming from roku.com if you want to log into the television so that it 
accesses your personal preferences and favorites, yeah, that's fine. It's all coming from Roku. So everything can pretty much be managed off your cell phone. As you can see, you get the Netflix, the Disney button and whatnot. What you don't get is a YouTube button. And I guess it's because YouTube doesn't want to give these partners that they allow to use YouTube the app. They don't pay into it, so they don't allow you to um, use their uh, software. So... Everything is pretty much managed from your smartphone or your iPad. Some people will appreciate this because they use their iPad regularly, like they're sitting at home, retired, and they're chilling, watching uh, stuff on television, and they're reading things on their iPad, and they have the Roku app on their iPad or their iPhone, and they're really quick to be able to connect their um uh, their their television directly to the mobile device that they want to use. Now, that can be a really, really good thing. That also means that if you ever lose the remote control, you can just as easily still run everything off of your smartphone or your iPad. So basically, that's the future of television. The future of television is you've got an iPad or an iPhone, and you have a television that's pretty much obeying your iPad, your iPhone, or for the people who are connected to it via a computer, they're using the cast to device button. My only issue is it causes the overall system to be relatively cheap. Now, granted, it is more efficient and it also makes the system in less expensive to buy. My problem is it means that the television has less and less of a character of its own. When I buy Vizio televisions, I get a Vizio remote with the television. All of the Vizio remotes, for the most part, work with all Vizio televisions. Now, some people lose remotes, some people drop them, lose the batteries and whatnot and whatnot. But the thing about it is the Roku remote, you, you can get larger Roku remotes, you can get smaller Roku remotes, but the bottom line is you're stuck using a Roku remote. So you think about it, it didn't matter whether or not this television was branded on or whether it was called a Hisense or whether it was called a Sanyo or whether it was anything else. This is basically a Roku TV. Roku itself does not make televisions, but because their software is so integrated into the televisions, you could basically say that this is a Roku television. So other than that, if you're looking for a long lasting quality device, obviously nobody can really speak to long term reliability. When a person reviews a television, for the most part, they're reviewing the ease of setup. They're reviewing the picture quality. They're reviewing the sound quality. And they're reviewing any extra features the television may have. This is a 4K television. Picture quality is very good. It's got the backlit LCD back display. Looking at it from different angles, as you can probably see, it has a lot of glare. So there's really no anti-glare technology. Uh, some of these screens have a matte black finish, which means that glare is very, very difficult to see. And um, as you can see, reflections are very easy to see in addition to background light. If you're putting this in a child's room, it probably doesn't matter. This is a relatively inexpensive television, so you don't expect to have any of the bells and whistles. The wireless internet connector in this television is very good it supports up to 5g spectrum which is pretty much the new routers that are going into people's house when you get fio spectrum whatever that's pretty much what you're getting you're getting a 2.4 g that can split over to a 5g when it feels necessary um i hooked it up using 5g but at any given time it can drop to 2.4 g um, which means that you get less download speeds and whatnot so ultimately, this television is technologically up to date and modern. It has a very thin bezel, uh, so it looks good. The feet are relatively thin, which means that, and this is one of the things that I talked to my cousins about, you have to actually anchor this television on the back, or you can nail it down or however you wanna do it. But if you're gonna have a television like this around children, you want to make sure that it doesn't flip over and fall on them if they, you know, grab on it or something. So televisions like this are really designed to be mounted to the wall. Like this television has a very flat back. But if you're going to put it on a stand like I did in this video, you're going to probably want to tether it to the wall. So that means that you're going to use some kind of wire system or support 
to make sure that no child or infant or toddler can ever pull it down. Because this happens a lot with toddlers. They, they pull televisions right off the damn wall and they fall on them. You don't want that to happen. But it's a relatively light television, so I, I don't think it would um, necessarily kill an infant, but you don't want it to happen. So you want to make sure that you um, use as many uh, you know, safeguards as possible. Now, as far as the audio quality, I'm really disappointed in that it doesn't have larger speakers. This bezel is small, the speaker depth and drivers are small, so watching on this television is kind of like using a regular desktop monitor. When you buy a television like this nowadays, and I guess this is what they do, they make it as cheap as possible, they don't put really big speakers in, they want you to buy a sound bar. The speakers on this television are really not that loud. Now, unfortunately, because YouTube would censor me, I can't play music and whatnot out of the television. What I can say is if you go to the store and you listen to it yourself because you're looking for a television, you yourself can make the decision about whether or not it's loud enough for you. If this is going in some old person's room or if this is going in a child's room, maybe you don't want it to be that loud. But me personally, I enjoy having a television that can get loud when I need it to even though I already have a stereo speaker system hooked up to my television. A sound bar is pretty much necessary. So this is basically the television. Great picture quality, 4K. It can support up to 4K if you so have a 4K source. It looks great when you're watching movies. It's nice and bright. If you're watching television, it looks good. It's a good television. I'm amazed at what we can buy for $200. A 50-inch television for $218. During the sales, it'll probably go cheaper on Black Friday. So let's see what some other people had to say about this television on Walmart.com. Well, they had a lot of reviews, so there's a pretty good sample of reviews for this television. As you can see, $218. There are 534 ratings, and out of 534 ratings... The vast majority of them, as you can see, are at least four stars or better. So I was looking through some of the commentary, and mind you, I didn't do this before buying the television. I just pretty much had an idea what to expect. One negative review says, I bought this television in a 43-inch. So first of all, I'm going to invalidate this review because the television that we just purchased was a 50-inch. You cannot review something that isn't the exact product that you, you know, you're supposed to be reviewing. That's just stupid. So anyway, let's look and see how many other people said that this is a bad TV. Let's look for the two stars. It says, I'm not a fan. I am not a fan. I'm not a fan. Okay, it has a great picture, but about a week after having it, I was getting a line through the top of it. Then all of a sudden, the volume didn't work. I was so excited to get this TV to get disappointed. I think you missed a comma or a hyphen or something. I will be returning and buying Samsung. So basically, your cheap ass decided you're going to get a $200 television. You're going to get pissed at it because that's not what you wanted. So you're just going to take it back and get a Samsung. Okay, fine. I'll be fair. Whatever. Okay, next guy. Let's see. Sound sucks. Everything else is great, though. I love the size. I love the picture, but the sound sucks. I have it all the way on 100 and can still barely hear it. I don't want to return it, so I'll just end up buying a sound bat. A sound bat for it. Bat. It would have gotten five stars had it not been for the poor sound quality. Well, uh, Dionysia, um... The sound quality is not what you had a problem with. What you had a problem with was the volume. Sound quality can be good even when volume is low. I will, however, agree with you on this one fact. The volume is low because the drivers are small. But what you didn't have a problem with was the quality of sound. You had a problem with the volume. Hi, Denisha. Thanks so much for reaching out. This is uh, the department. We apologize for the sound issues you've been having. Please reach out to On Customer Service instead of running your stupid mouth on Walmart.com and telling people the product sucks when you don't even know what you're talking about and you have to go buy a sound bat for it. Denisha. Okay. Sound sucks. We have Ot on 100 
and still can't hear it. Dawn, with a little D. Yeah, uh-huh. Hi, Dawn. We're sorry to hear you're having audio issues. No, no, no. Dawn is not having audio issues. Dawn is having a volume issue. Anyway. This is, I, I feel bad for these customer service departments. I really do. Having to entertain such poorly written letters. Okay. This TV works when it wants to. I have only had it four months, and I had to unplug and plug it back in several times to reset the sound that decides it wants to stop working on all things, even the soundbar I tried using to avoid powering down. I think this is not a complete sentence, but uh, Christine apparently uh, thinks it is. This was written June 11, 2020, so apparently she got it during quarantine. But uh, I think Christine, uh, Christine needs to go back to grammar school. So anyway, I just got my TV. I put it all the way up to 100. Everybody goes straight to 100, you know? Anyway, if, if by the time you get to 50 it's not loud enough, you probably need a sound bat. So anyway, it sounds like it's on 30 at 100. Well, here's my question. If you put it up to 100, this is the first time you use it. You put it up to 100, and it sounds like it's on 30, then it really doesn't sound like it's on 30. It's just that 100 isn't very high, and 30 is definitely not as high as 100 because of, you know, numerical order. Anyway, the TV is way too big for a single person to return, so I'm just going to have to buy speakers. Now, did this shit make any sense? If I had given this to my principal and said, yeah, principal or English teacher, um, this is my sentence, they'd have probably slapped me in the mouth. The TV is too big. So I'm just going to have to buy speakers. My car is too big. So I'm just going to have to buy a Toyota Camry. Whatever. Anyway. Uh, let's see. Two stars. Cannot upload the picture. Only have the TV. Now, he already started out all screwed up right here. Only have the TV for four months. And the volume keeps going out. And I have a white line going across the top of the screen. Okay, so maybe, out of all these reviews, maybe a white line might be something we want to watch out for. So, if I have a problem with this television, within a couple of months of a white line, I'll be sure to update this review. Because I've updated reviews before when I've had problems with stuff. Oh, boy, these people. Okay, let's see. Soon as I plugged it in, I saw a large colorful bar going down the right side. So, basically, it was broken in shipping. Site won't let me submit a photo. Well, why do you need to submit a photo? All you need to do is return the shit because the site doesn't allow us to submit photos. Where did they get these people? So anyway, anyway, let's see if there's any if there's any more bad legitimate reviews here. Maybe I'll go to the threes. I'm not going to do this forever. Let's let's go to the threes. I, I, I tell you, and the sad thing is, the average consumer, they would read this shit and they would know whether or not to buy it or not. But anyway. The picture is fine and Roku is great. It does have issues connecting to the modem which sits right next to it. If I were you, I would just plug it in with Ethernet because if the modem is sitting right next to it, you're better off with Ethernet. Like for instance, in my house, I have my modem, 5G, Spectrum, whatever, and I have a wire, Ethernet wire. I didn't feel like going through my wall and boom, I've got a nice little monitor right there. And if I put another monitor right here for my uh, casting on my television, if I put another monitor on this wall, I'm going to hook it up the same way through Ethernet. Ethernet is faster, and it can't be interfered with for the most part. Not very bright. Brightness is very low, even at the brightest setting. Colors are brilliant, but I'm still taking it back in the morning and pick up a different one. Okay, well, this kind of sounds legitimate. I don't know if he tested the brightness that much because he doesn't say what I will say is I felt the colors were bright enough. I felt the backlight was bright enough. My only issue was the amount of glare, but that's to be expected because there's no anti-glare technology. And on top of that, my uh, the lighting in that room is actually very bright. Uncle painted the walls bright, and the lighting, the recessed lighting is bright. So, you know, I, I, I feel it necessary to watch most of these televisions nowadays in a dark room. But you damn sure ain't watching it if there's a light source behind you. Okay. Brightness is very low. 
Okay, so that I'll consider that legitimate. He gave it three stars. I don't know if it deserves so few stars, but okay. I haven't had this TV for over a month yet, and half of the screen is fuzzy. A line going through the TV. Highly upset. Oh, and this person actually submit photos. So I guess the last person was lying. He said you couldn't submit photos. Okay, so he has a line going through his television. Now, when I set mine up, as you just saw, I didn't see any lines, but I will keep a lookout and make sure that there's no lines going through little Elsa right here, if that's Elsa, because I, honestly, I can't keep up with these damn Disney characters, because they keep making these boring movies. I was waiting for Milan to come out, but uh, I didn't get to see Milan yet. So anyway, no audio options. TV functions are fine, pictures good. The problem I have is audio options, optical cable, via optical cable. I have it connected to a five-point sound system that the TV will not can detect, I'm surprised. It will only play in stereo, not surround sound. The only high-end audio available for this TV that is plug-and-play is from Roku themselves at a combined cost of $600. How the hell do you go from 218 to $600? Okay, um, pay a little more for... Per and, and let me just say this, listen, if you're looking for high-end sound, if you're looking for high-volume audio with built-in speakers that are huge with subwoofers, Obviously, this is not the television to buy. This is a $218 television. The speakers on this aren't much louder than a, like a Nintendo Switch. So anyway, pay a little more for better brand TV. Audio sucks. The audio on this TV totally sucks. Everybody hates the audio. Volume has a dial that goes up to 100, but after you get it to about 35, which is not loud at all, the volume doesn't get any higher. The 4K is not much better than a 1080p TV. Even if it's even that good and the only thing is the price pay sixty dollars more for a better brand vizio 4k tvs are way better so let me just say it like this i like vizio in my house i use vizio this right here is a vizio 40 i have a vizio 80 and i have a vizio 50. i like vizio i like keeping all my televisions basically the same so this way i can keep using remotes from one tv to the next and um, I will say this, Vizio definitely is, in my opinion, really good. I've never been disappointed with a Vizio. Even my sound is pretty good. Uh, it's pretty loud and the sound quality is decent. This is a $218.50 inch television. If you were to go to Walmart and you were, let's see, if you buy the 50 inch Vizio from Walmart. Let's see, if you get the Vizio, Vizio... Uh, 50-inch smart TV from Walmart. <clears throat> if you get the 50-inch Vizio smart TV from Walmart, you're paying $298. So yeah, there is a there's about what? A, a, a damn near a $80 price increase because this is basically $300. In fact, you know what? I actually have this Vizio television. I have a 50-inch Vizio tele. I have this one right here, in fact. But, um... Anyway, I, and I haven't had a problem with it. I, I don't really watch it that much because I'm usually on my computer and I have a 34-inch curved Alienware monitor with the lights and everything and it's so cool and all that. But the thing about it is um, I have a Vizio 50 and I've been happy with it when I use it. It always is good. The sound quality is good. I like it. But uh, yeah, $298 is a hell of a lot different to 218 Maybe someday they'll have better speakers at $218. But right now, you just bought a $218 50-inch television. So yeah, you're probably going to want to just buy the sound bar. But if you notice, the majority of the reviews are talking about how they don't like the sound bar. That's the important thing. They need a sound bar because they don't like what it comes with. They need bigger drivers in the television. So that's pretty much the main concern. Okay, it's really great purchase, and my baby girl loves all the kids. Shiz, the shiz, what the hell is it? The shiz, uh, the shiz, y'all aren't even proofread. So anyway, the picture quality on the television is great all the times I have reset the TV to sound issues. Okay, so obviously, let's just wrap it up right here and say for the most part, the television is good, the audio quality is okay, but you're going to want to buy yourself a sound bar. If you're putting this in some old person's room, you know how old people, they typically don't like playing it very loud, or you can get the exact opposite. You get one of these people's half deaf, and they want you to play it up loud. Okay, fine. Um, get yourself a sound bar, and, and, and that'll be it. Just get a sound bar. Okay. 
Uh, is there anything I missed? This television weighs 26 pounds, which is pretty good. Um, so that means that it's really light. It's easy to mount. Uh, anything else special? 60 hertz refresh rate. So for you people who may be planning to buy this for PlayStation or Xbox, uh, PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X, you might want to go with a higher-end television specifically because they're saying that you're going to get 120 hertz and some things are promising, like, especially if you hook it to a computer, you can get, like, 200 and you can get higher. But for the most part, 120 hertz is basically where you're, you're going to, we're going to limit ourselves. Because for the most part, most video cards don't really do much better than 120 unless you're playing an older game. And you're using, like, a very high-end video card like I have the 2080 Ti in this uh, computer tower right here. So, um, definitely just get a set. If you want to get an on-TV, a Hisense, or whatever get yourself a sound bar and i will also say this all these tvs are not created equal i bought my mom a 55 inch sanyo her speakers were really good especially for the size room that she's in and even though it was a roku television and you know my disappointments with you know the simple one version of roku may apply uh, she was uh, happy with it, and she likes the sound as is. She didn't feel the necessity to buy anything else. So let's just cut our losses right there. So as far as the energy guide goes, if you use this thing regularly during the year, you're going to spend about $20 extra on your electric bill. So, you know, that's just what you're expecting. But other than that, I hope I've answered just about every question she possibly had. So if there's any uh, outstanding questions, please feel free to uh, make a comment on the URL section down below.